Yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Random discussion show. Lorenzo Tomas here. Yeah, uh, make sure you guys go check out that random radio podcast show up right now at YouTube and SoundCloud. Playing some of the best artists that you've ever heard. Underground. Check them out. Alright. This week. This week we are we are educate we are educating you. Just educating you. Because this is gonna lead up to some things later on in some future episodes. But I'm just giving you a little education right here. We're gonna start out slow. I'm gonna ease you into it. The way only way, the best way I know how. So this week's episode is about Zionism. Zionism. Do you guys does, it, does it, anybody know what a, what Zionism is? I see there are people out there who do know, some who don't know. All right, let me let me give you the definition as Google has it for Zionism. Zionism is a movement for originally the reestablishment and now the development and protection of a Jewish nation in what is now Israel. What it was established as a political organization in 1897 under Theodore Herschel and was later led by Chaim Weissman. Now, let's go to um, Zionism, Mr. Mr. Theodore Herschel. Uh, Theodore Herschel basically started Zionism as a uh, reformation. As he started the Zionist Reformation uh, in 1897. Actually, it goes back to like 1876. But 1897, he started getting his things going, uh, starting this, this, this Zionist nation where they wanted to return to Zion, return to a land that they can call their own. And that led to the occupation of what is now known as Palestine. Now, uh, many of the Zionists, um, they, they refused to speak Yiddish, ironically. Um, they thought that it, it developed uh, in the context of European persecution so something to think about there um and, and once they moved to israel they refused to speak uh the, the yiddish language and uh many zionists uh controlled a lot of the uh money and power in G- germany france america russia at that time of 1897 around then so i mean so let's put some things in the context for you so many of you are thinking about 1897 so i want you to think about this is before uh, the United States is in this before any world wars. This is after the Civil War, so this is uh, about 30 years after the end of the Civil War. Um, you, you, for black people, you do have some racism. This is not uh, Black Tulsa hasn't happened yet. Uh, so just in case you guys are thinking about that, just so everybody knows, right, right now we are working on the railroad. We have the the West is being built up. The Chinese Exclusion Act has already been signed, so the Chinese are being misplaced and being treated as as such so just so, so we're clear on this there you go uh anti-semitism uh was an internal feature of all societies in which jews lived as minorities and that only a separation could allow jews to escape eternal persecution now many people don't know this about the jews in the past uh since since even the the exile out of egypt the jews have been cast out of every place that they have lived in uh, when Titus, a Roman, took over uh, on the conquest under his father Vespasian and Flavius took over and took over the second uh, uh, second temple of Jerusalem, uh, they were diasporaed out all over the Eastern Europe and thus the Judaic religion was spread about. But Zionists are uh, Ashken- mostly Ashkenazi Jews, which means that they are mostly Eastern European Jews. So I hope, I hope, I hope everybody understands this. I hope we all understand this. They are Jews. Zionists are Jews. They do practice the Judaic faith. There you have it. Now, um, that doesn't mean that all Jews are Zionists, however. And we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, so now that we know about Theodore Herschel, we know about him. We're not going to go too much into Theodore Herschel because we're only going to focus on Zionism. I don't want us to go too deep off into the woods. I want us to focus just on Zionism today. We'll go back to 
Herschel and all that when he comes up later. Now, Zion is a hill near Jerusalem, uh, widely symbolizing the land of Israel. It is where Moslem, Moses came and brought the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai. So, make sure that you guys understand that that is what the people believe, that the Zionists believe that they are going back to is that land. All right, let's jump a little bit to World War I. Uh, World War I starts out because uh, a part of Zionist, of the Zionist thinking, and some say that this is the leftist Zionist thinking. This is like um, Zionist to the extreme. That's when you get uh, communism and things like socialism. And World War I started because a communist group, uh, uh, an extreme radical group of Zionists, uh, went ahead and uh, assassinated the French, the French, not the French, I'm sorry, the Archduke of Austria. Which then led to a massive attack of uh, Austria and Germany on USSR, leading to a big war. And it all started because of these communist thinkings, e thinkers. Even uh, Trotsky, Karl Marx, they are Zionists. Interestingly enough, they are Zionists. They are Jews who come from a Zionist background, and there you have it. So World War I is happening. America is not in it. And then the Zionists supposedly brought us in. So now I'm going to go to a couple of conspiracy theories. Some things that people do believe about Zionists. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's true. I'm just telling you the things that are out there. So don't, don't kill the messenger. I'm just trying to give people some food for thought. You guys do the dishes. So many people believe that the Zionists uh, are part of... They, they were looking for different parts of land. Uh, Argentina, Uganda. And then they chose Palestine after the British had occupied it from the Ottoman Empire during World War I. However, in World War I, the British were starting to lose the war because Germany well, was starting to kick a little butt and they were starting to, you know, do good. So the Zionists, conspiracy theory time, this was all real history, now it's conspiracy theory time, ding, 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 ding. Conspiracy theory time, many people think that the Zionists promised the British that they would win the war and they would be able to take over German, Germany's land and other lands if they brought America into the war because America was staying out of it and actually America was buying goods from Germany so they were kind of funding helping Germany out so two things happened the singing of the Lusitania which you guys can go and look that up and you'll find out more about that well, that happened uh, where America was giving sending goods to Britain and then supposedly the Germans sink, sunk our, our ship that we were sending. And then the, the Zimmerman Telegraph, where the Germans say that they were trying to tell Mexico that if you side with us, if America comes into World War I, we will give you back Californians and Texas. These things didn't happen. They didn't happen. They, or the Lusitania happened, but the Zimmerman Telegraph never got to Mexico. And then America found out, thus they entered the war. And then Germany lost. Germany lost the war, and then it was over. And then the League of Nations was created, and Germany had a gang of sanctions put on them. Like, what was it, 22 mil? It was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot of money put on them and sanctions. And so many people think that it, that was the Zionists who did that. And then as a thank you, Palestine, Palestine was divided. Half was given to the French. The other half was given to uh, Britain. And portion of it was given to uh, the Zionists. And now that part is known as Israel. So what do you guys think? You know, what do you, what do you guys think about what you've heard so far about the Zionists? That 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 conspiracy theory is kind of strange, right? If if you want to know more about that, go look up the Balfour Doctrine. Go look up the pa the Palestine Mandate, and then you, then you then you'll probably understand that a little bit more. And then you 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 can be the judge for that yourself. What do you think about that? Do you think that the Zionists brought America into the war? Do you think a group of people in a religion could do this? Do you think it's possible? Well, when we come back after the break, we're gonna we're gonna play some music. We got some music from Indy Uchia. Uh, we're gonna play Curtain Call, because I interviewed him. I like this song so much, I wanna, I'm, gl I'm glad he's back. I wanna play it again. So this is Indy Uchia. We're gonna play Curtain Call, uh, featuring Just One. But we're gonna come back. We're gonna talk more about Zionism. Only Zionism. We're gonna talk more about it. What do you guys think? We're gonna when we come back, we're gonna talk about. Uh, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the Balfour Doctrine. We're gonna talk about the Palestinian Mandate just a little bit more. Some things that are carved out in that. We're gonna talk about the rise of Adolf Hitler because he's got a part to do with this Zionist stuff. We're gonna talk about W uh, uh, World War II. We're gonna talk about Palestine. We're gonna talk about APEC. You guys may know about that. We're gonna talk about American Zionists. And uh, if we have time, we'll talk about the difference between Jews and Zionists, 
uh, what uh, anti-Semitism, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll see if we can you know make some sense of all of this. You guys, tell me what you think in the comments, man. We're talking about Zionism. This is Indy Uchi. The name of the song is called Curtain Call, featuring Just One. Check out Indy Uchi's music everywhere: SoundCloud, Facebook, YouTube, Reverb Nation, and whether he has hot music, hot music everywhere. I'm gonna see you guys in a minute. Random Radio. It's murder. Murder. Let's go. They done fucked up, brother. They done walk up the beast. I don't want it. Hey, yo. Why, bro? Let's go this board. Obstacles we're overcoming, my vicious clear, we up and running Everybody talking like they up to something, not called and bluffing, they ain't nothing, nothing Let it shut the motherfucker eyes, chain threads coming out the pods You shake, you better think, going in a blink, messing with the guys Hit the head before I hit the throttle, two bitches simple, hit the bottom My mind is slipping, lost in the bubble, break the beats down, down, down the rubble Homie, fuck the fame, drunk as fuck, switching lanes in the Chevy truck Crack the bass, let the system bump, I'm alive, why, what the fuck you thought? Power surging, I'm a violent person, slicing surging, I'm a brother Send it up a clip, show me what the fish, show me what the fuck you think your body's surfing. I'm a motherfucking problem, homie. Ain't no right to put the fire on them. Ain't no disconnecting my set. One word, then we pull up on them. Black, show me where the cop is at. I don't see any like a cataract. Anybody from me, but she's a proof of fact. Yeah, just one stop slice on the mat. Motherfucking name, motherfucking act. Right hook, now you mumble rap. True shit, live your wig split, make a snap back. Got your bitty cat. When it comes to rap, I snap back. Won't take a loss, rather cop bad. Let you marvel at this Iron Man while your life force. Expires. You ain't ready for this war machine That swords a nigga on his optimist I ain't one to grab that little ooze He can't handle what I'm about to spit All I know is that guy flow Like beer swinging with Thor's hammer Rockin' bell cause I'm a beast In the punch hitting like hoax scammer Nerd mix that wire pub That might play sipping on craft brew I ain't kinda homie It'll take three boys to match What I'm about to do Will you a venom? That's right, I rock it boy I'm a monster boy Carry lots of toys I'll bring the noise You bring your boys and I'll dead that shit Put you to sleep then bang your beauty she can die too, this ain't a move Get me fucked up with that wire pub Call me the villain to finish up What's up everyone, this is Taz the Artist I am here to talk about the Random Radio Compilation Album Part 2. Random Radio Compilation Part 2 features some of the best artists that have been featured on Random Radio. It also features my song, Lose Control. I'm about to 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 lose control. Random Radio Compilation Part 2 is up at SoundCloud and YouTube. Go listen to it now. Support your boy. You are listening to Random Radio. Yeah. Do your mixes sound flat and lifeless? Does the crack of your snares hurt every time you turn your music up? Are your 808s floppy and lacking the bass you just know they should have? If so, it's time for you to hit up Artist Music Engineering to get your next single radio ready. Artist Music is a Pensado Award nominated full-service mixing and mastering company dedicated to making your song sound just as good as the pros. It doesn't matter if your music is hip-hop, pop, rock, EDM, or bluegrass. Art is Music will take your mix to the next level, allowing it to compete on an equal playing field with today's hits. So what are you waiting for? Contact us at www.soundcloud.com backslash engineering and get your singles sounding like hits today. Lorenzo Tomas here for the Random Discussion Show. Hey, are you an artist with some very strong political views? Are you an activist who is out there trying to clean up these streets with your words and with your actions? Contact us at rrpshow at gmail.com. We would love to have you on the Random Discussion Show. Let your opinion be heard. Voice your thoughts. Tell the people what you think. And don't be afraid to hear new ideas. Make sure that you hit us up at rrpshow at gmail.com today and schedule yourself an interview so that we can hook you up and put you on the show. By the way, did I mention it was free? Yeah, it costs you nothing. Just hit us up, rrpshow at gmail.com. Say you want to be scheduled for the Random Discussion Show, we'll book you today. It's that simple. 
Let your voice be heard, man. Hit us up. RRP show at gmail.com. Get on the random discussion show today. Hey, random radio. If you haven't done so yet, go follow us on Twitter at RRP show. That's at RRP show. Twitter at RRP show. Random discussion show. Yeah, we are back talking about Zionism. Yeah, something that's interesting. So we 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 we've, been, we've gone through Zionism, how it started, brief history. Uh, we 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 we're, we're here at a portion that's pretty interesting. We come up with Israel. Uh, we're talking about the, the beginning of Israel right now. That's where that's where the story left off. It's the beginning of Israel. Uh, Balfour Doctrine and the Palestinian Mandate. So let's go back just a little bit and recap. Uh, Fred Theodore Herschel creates Zionism. Uh, well, is, is, is credited with being the founder of Zionism, which is a liberation movement for the people of the Judaic religion, uh, Jews. So um, there have been many Zionist reformations uh, throughout the Yes, it's been general Zionism, religious Zionism, labor Zionism, revisionist Zionism, and green Zionism. Revisionist Zionism has really been the one that has really taken off uh, the most. It is a faction within the Zionist movement. It is the founding ideology of the non-religious right in Israel and was the chief ideological competitor to the dominant socialist labor Zionism. The ideology was developed by Zev Jabotinsky. I could be getting that wrong. And, was, and who advocated a revision of the practical Zionism of David Ben-Gurun and Chaim Weizmann. Uh, yeah, so these are, uh, it's, it's, it's a big thing. Either way, let's go back to, um, yeah, let's, 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 let's go back to the, to the, to the, to the British, Pal- to the British Mandate of Palestine. Uh, the British Mandate of Palestine was a geological, was a geopolitical entity under the British administration, carved out of Ottoman southern Syria after World War I. British civil administration in Palestine operated from 1920 until 1948. During its existence, the territory was known simply as Palestine, but in later years, a variety of other names and descriptors have been used including mandatory or mandate palestine or british mandate of palestine either way this is the territory that was once occupied uh the arabs had it ottoman empire had it after world war one the british took over it and then they mandate it in the british mandate palestine mandate they started saying that hey we're gonna allow jewish uh people to inhabit this land that people were already on because they are claiming it is theirs the Balfour Doctrine, with the Balfour Declaration of, of 1917, written by uh, Lord Balfour, um, who was a declaration. He, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The declaration was contained in a letter dated uh, on November 2nd, 1917, from the United Kingdom's Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour, Lord Arthur Balfour, to who none other than the only and only Lord Rothschild leader of the British Jewish community um, for a transform- for a transmission to the Zionist Federation of Great Britain and Ireland. So the Rothschilds are involved. Many people know about the Rothschilds family, one of the largest bank holding, money changing families, longest standing bank holding, money changing families in history. Very rich, very powerful banking family. The Balfour Doctrine, so this man Balfour did this and many people don't know this, but Rothschild is a Zionist. Very much funded the Zionist movement, so it would make sense. Uh, so that's, you get that. <clears throat> Those two doctrines establish the state of Israel. Uh, Adolf Hitler rises to power during this time period as uh, Germany is completely dismantled by World War I. The League of Nations puts sanctions on them, making them totally plummeting their economy. Uh, their economy was mostly funded by German ba- by banks that had mostly uh, Jewish people who were a part of the Zionist Reformation in charge of them. Adolf Hitler rose to power and, and rose with the Nazi party, which is a socialist party, uh, decided that the government could fund everything. Uh, by doing that, he depleted the funds from uh, the, the need for a, he de- actually depleted the need for a banking system, which uh, to the much chagrin 
to the uh, banking community. Uh, this led to a propaganda campaign against Adolf Hitler uh, throughout various different uh, entities such as America and France by Jewish newspapers and Jewish uh, Zionist uh, influence. This then led to Adolf Hitler doing the, prog the programs on the Jewish businesses and banks. Um, yeah, leading to some real problems. That led to the Havara Agreement, signed in 1937, where the, where the Zionists agreed to deal with the Nazis and say, hey, let our Jews sell their land and uh, let's prepare them to move over to Palestine anyway. So the Palestinians, so let's, 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 let's backtrack a little bit. I want to give you a little bit of history. There's some things that I glossed over. You're going to have to look these things up because I'm not going to tell you the whole thing. I'm not going to tell you the whole story. I'm just giving you a brief overview. The Zionists used to do these things called aliyahs, you know, like the singer aliyah. And so they used to do these things called aliyahs. And uh, they, aliyah means the awakening. And so they would take these aliyahs, but they would move tons of, of Jewish people over to Palestine to live, to occupy the land away from the Muslims, Christians, and Palestinian Jews who were already there. So Adolf Hitler and the Havara Agreement agreed to do this. Uh, upon this happening in 1938, Adolf Hitler ended up invading Poland uh, to get some Germans who were being oppressed there by some Soviet Soviets who violated the Soviet-German treaty with Poland. Uh, 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 of annexing and separating Poland. Either way, yeah, I looked that up. So either way, that happened. Then the war started, and Jews were stuck. Many innocent Jews were stuck in concentration camps throughout this war, actually labor camps throughout this war. Thus, suffering some pretty tough hardships at this point. Now, conspiracy theory time. Conspiracy theory time. Many people believe that the Zionists never were in concentration camps. And all the pictures that you see, all the people that you see during the Holocaust were actually real Jews who suffered uh, because the Judaic story is about the suffering of Jews. You know, the, the Moses story, the suffering of the Jews there, and then throughout the time, the suffering of Jews as being put out of places, all because they're just such great people, right? So I just want you guys to remember that. So World War II, that, that's the conspiracy theory. That's the conspiracy theory, ding, ding, ding. Something to think about. I don't know if it's true or not. Something to think about. They say no, no Jews. Either way, so the Jews suffer. Many of them flee to different states, different countries, uh, France, Britain, America. Upon fleeing World War II, America defeats Germany. Yeah, we win the war. Everybody gets out of there. Pfft, all good. Palestine is now occupied. Israel is established in 1948. Officially the place to be now the palestinian israel conflict already starts many is many palestinians feel as though hey you are pushing us the israel the israelites are pushing us off of our land and many israelis feel as though they are deserving of the land because they are jews who should be back there because they were kicked off of there when titus came through and kicked them off so uh who's right you know do the jews deserve the land did the Palestinians deserve their land? They were already there, right? Do the Jews deserve their land? It, it's supposed to be their land. But the question that I must ask you is this. Go back a little bit to what I said earlier before the break. The majority of the Jews who occupy Israel today are of the Zionist Reformation, right? The Zionist Reformation was a bunch of Ashkenazi Jews. Ashkenazi Jews do not trace their heritage back to Jerusalem. They are, they trace their heritage to Eastern European people who were Jewish converts. Many, the conspiracy theory is that they are Khazars. I don't know. If Jewish people were spread all around, they could, they could be anything. Who knows? And maybe then again, they could all be descendants of Jews. See, this is a tricky one, right? Because of the diaspora, because the Jews were spread out so much, who's to say that some Jews did not? spread out to one concentrated area and make a new, new group of Jews who look exactly the same. So people say that they are not a race or a religion. They are, well, they're a religion, but not a race, Jewish people. But Zionists are not a religion, they're a cult. That's a conspiracy theory, something to think about. So, I don't know. Let's go to APEC. Are you guys familiar with APEC? Do you guys know what APEC is? 
Some of you are probably sitting there like, what the hell is he talking about? This all sounds familiar. Okay, AIPAC, go type it in. It stands for American Israel Public Affairs Committee. American Israel Public Affairs Committee is a lobbying group that advocates pro-Israel policies to the Congress and executive branch of the United States. Huh. That's interesting. Why do they need that? Why do they... (laughs) Why does Israel need pro-Israel policies to be the, people to advocate on it in Congress and the executive branch? Why do they need that? You know, there are politicians who have stated that if they don't advocate on behalf of Israel, they don't get um, anything. And they, 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 don't, they, they don't get to stay in, in power long, they don't get to stay in Congress long, they don't get anything. Many people believe that AIPAC put Obama, Hillary Clinton, even Donald Trump, into the place that it's in right now. Many people believe that APAC is controlling our campaigns and you can complain about Russia all you want. It doesn't matter. APAC is the one who's controlling our campaigns and controlling who we believe, who we vote for. Nine times out of ten, what I what the conspiracy theory is, no both candidates on both sides of the presidential election, both Republican and Democrat, when it comes down to the final two, are both representing APAC. Think about it. When Hillary and Donald Trump ran, did they both say that they were broke for Israel? When you think about the last couple presidencies and have they all been talking about how they are pro-Israel? Why is America pro-Israel? What, what, what do we what is our interest in that little small state? What do we care? Why are we so in debt on giving them everything? That brings us to America and Zionists. America has had a long-standing relationship with Zionists. Not Jews, but Zionists. Jews have been oppressed in America, but Zionists have been accepted. Zionists have been in our politics, they have been in our media, they have been in our slave trade. Oh yeah, Zionists. And so it's kind of interesting that now here we are, uh, talking about how they're instrumental into our political process. That's very interesting. Did you know that a lot of your tax money goes towards the... Uh, interests of Israel. Did you know that? Did you know that you pay a lot of taxes and your tax money, a lot of it goes towards the interests of Israel? Think about it. You pay a lot of taxes per year. Oh, you pay a lot of taxes. Property tax, income tax, sales tax. Tax, 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 tax. A lot of those taxes are that. Did you know that that the company that that monitors your phone calls, the company that monitors your phone calls when you make a phone call, the company that monitors your phone calls, make sure that it gets through, that it's hitting the right signals, that's an Israel, that's an Israeli company. The excise tax on your phone calls, where's that going? Is that going to Israel? Something to think about. And why is it going to Israel? Is it because of the Zionists? Do the Zionists have that much of a stronghold on our on our government that we? Owe them money like that? Hmm. So Jews and Zionists, right? What is the difference? What is the difference between a Jew and a Zionist? You might be sitting there next to your Jewish friend and you're think, looking at him like, are you a Zionist? No. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't really think that many Jews know what a Zionist is. I think many common Jew, Judaic people have no idea what a Zionist is. And that's because many Jewish people read, follow the Torah. Now, I don't know if this is true. And only a Zionist can tell you. But I think that majority of Zionists follow the Talmud. And they don't believe in the Torah. The Torah is different than the Talmud. The Talmud has a different set of rules, has a different belief system. Uh, the Torah believes in the ideas of Abraham, while the Talmud believes in a system of beliefs by scribes and rabbis who wrote the Talmud over a series of years. Kind of like the, uh, the Old Testament of the Bible. So, Many Jews don't even know, many practicing uh, Jews in America don't even know what the Talmud is. So they, 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 they're, very, they're very ignorant to the Talmud. Uh, it, it's the central text of the rabbinic Judaism. It is, the term Talmud normally refers to the collection of writings named specifically as the Babylonian Talmud. Ah. So that means that it, it's, it, to some Judeans, they may call this heathen. To mo- mo- some Orthodox Judeans may call the Talmud as heathen. They could. Who knows? 
Uh, there are some things known as ju- it, 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 it consists of three track takes. Uh, it is 62,000, 6,200 pages long, uh, and it has some some laws, some laws that were given to Moses that he was instructed not to write down, but were only orally expressed. So, some things uh, in there that you might want to, you know. Want. Conspiracy theory time. I got to hit you with a conspiracy theory. A conspiracy theory about the Talmud and Talmudic Jews is that they believe in the... Uh, sacrificing babies to Malach and Marduk. They believe, yes, yeah, sacrificing babies. They believe in the idea that when you circumcise a child, you uh, circumcise a boy, you put your mouth on the penis of the child, therefore giving him, uh, as, as the Talmud believes, that you can only receive God through the, the uh, through the, by putting your lips on the womb of the circumcision. I don't know. Now, I don't know if all that's true. That's the conspiracy theory. I don't know if it's true. You got to go look that up. I don't know. Uh, the idea that most um, Jews are, are not even practicing true Judaism. That's what, that's what some Zionists say. Now, there are some Orthodox Jews who are over in Palestine who are anti-Zionists. Check that out, Jack. So there, there are some Jews who do know the truth, some who don't. I think that most Jews here in America are might be a little bit in the dark and may not know much about uh, Zionists. Now, anti-Semitism. So this is an interesting subject here. So anytime a subject is brought up about the Holocaust or about uh, Zionists or Jews, it is considered anti-Semitism. Which is which is also very strange to me. Now, now the, the term anti-Semitism didn't start really until you uh, it didn't become a mainstream word until you got um, the Zionist movement uh, is, is 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 supposedly the the word here. So, um, with that said, let's take a look at what Semitic people are. Let's just take a look at that term. Semitic people is a term for an ethnic ethnic, cultural, or racial group of people who spoke the Semitic languages. The terminology was first used in the 1770s by members of the Göttingen School of History. Let's take a look at the Göttingen School of History. Who started that? Göttingen School of History was located at the University of Göttingen in the late 18th century. Uh, who started it? Who started it? They were looking at the, the races of people. Mongolian for yellow race, Malayan for brown race, Ethiopian for the black race. Uh, and it was the University of Göttingen was started by King George. Europeans. I think it was some Zionists behind it. Who knows? Either way, either way, let's go back to Semitic people. All right, so Semitic people uh are considered to be members of the caucasian race uh they are indo people and they are people who were mostly from the cartlevian speaking regions those regions would be known as the arabic regions the regions of this area have the y chromosome and they would be in the middle east like arabs jews median mendians samaritans and assyrians so we are talking about mostly uh Ar- arabian people upper arabic people now, going back to what we said earlier about the uh, Ashkenazis and the people who are mostly Zionists being from Eastern Europe, are those, Samar- are those Semitic people? Yeah, because you speak the language doesn't necessarily make you a Semitic, because if I start learning the Semitic language, does that make me a Semitic person? So are those people Semitic? Or are they just people who just speak the language? They just learn the language and they practice a religion from that area. Technically, wouldn't a Christian be a Semitic also? Because they practice the religion of the Semitic people who were once Jews but converted to the cult of Christ or the rising sun. You guys tell me what you think. Some things to think about, man. Zionists. What are they? Who are they? Are they running the world? Keep all this information in mind. Refer back to this. We'll be, we'll be coming back to this soon. I got some information. I got some things I'm going to talk to you about in the future that refer to Zionists. This is just a teaching tool today. We're just learning a few things about the world. See if it'll be useful. I'll see you guys in, the next, in a minute. Random Radio. What's good, world? It's your boy Twizzle White Peace here to talk to you about the Random Radio Compilation Album Part 2. The Random Radio Compilation Album features some of the best rappers from 
past shows. It also features my song, The Random Symphony. Yes, it's me, T.Y.P.'s, big shout out, R.I.V. You don't like me, kiss the ring. You won't fight me or sissy, you're pissy, full of envy, full of money's what my pockets be, and I'm rocking non-stop, cop and guap, on and off the clock, see? Random Radio Compilation Album is available on YouTube and SoundCloud right now. So go listen, you won't be disappointed. And guess what? You're listening to Random Radio Podcast. The Rizzo told my eyes here for Royal Skate and Apparel. Royal Skate and Apparel is where I get all of my skating gear. I don't go nowhere else. And also, I go and check out their weekly showcases where they have all music of all kinds there and they let these artists perform and get down all the time. Now, if you're interested in hitting up Royal Skate and Apparel, make sure you go to 3429 Ridge Road in Lansing, Illinois. That is 3429 Ridge Road in Lansing, Illinois. Or you can always hit up GJ at 708 297 4596. That's 708 297 4596. Or you can go to their Facebook page at facebook.com backslash Royal SNA. Royal Skating and Apparel. Tell them right on Radio Sent you. Hey, Lorenzo Tomas here for Random Radio. Random Radio is looking to interview you. Yes, you. You could be like this guy. Yo, this is Dunk Williams of the 219. Or you could be like her. Hey, y'all. My name is Sherry Rose. Yeah. All you got to do is email us at rrpshow at gmail.com and we'll set you up. It's that simple. And it's free. Did we mention that? Did we mention it was free? I just mentioned it, right? It's free. It's free. It'll cost you nothing. All you got to do is send us an email to rrpshow at gmail.com today. Wait, there's more. Also, when we conduct the interview, you can send us one of your tracks and we'll play one of your songs during the interview. Yeah, it's just that simple. All of this for free. Email us at rrpshow at gmail.com. Sign up for your free interview today. What you got to lose? Hit us up. Random Radio. We'll talk to you soon, man. If you haven't done it yet, go like us on Facebook. That's right. Facebook.com slash RRP show. Facebook.com slash RRP show. Facebook.com slash RRP show. Make sure you guys go and check out the Random Radio Podcast Show up at YouTube and SoundCloud right now. Check out a new episode of the Random Radio Podcast Show every Sunday. Don't miss it at midnight Chicago Standard Time, Central Standard Time. All right, I'll see you guys next week with another Random Discussion Show. Start your Wednesday morning off right every morning off right with a Random Discussion Show. Go look up some of the things I told you about. I, I You know what? I have some stuff in the discussion box. You got in the... In the, in the Credit box, you guys check it out. Check it out! Yeah. Let's look it up! You are listening to Random Radio.